Cabot Guns is excited to reintroduce the national standard to our model lineup. This stainless steel 1911 is, I really can't say it any other way, it's perfect. From the satin polished flats to the, the bead blast rounds, the walnut, we've got burled walnut grips on here. This is an amazing pistol that anyone would be proud to have in their collection. So there's a lot of little details uh, that have been brought into our model lineup recently, and the national standard actually encompasses all of them. So we'll start at the front of the gun, work our way back, and show you all the little details that make this Cabot amazing. So starting off, all cabots, uh, unless you're getting like a threaded barrel, we have our deep flush cut and crown. Well, it's not a deep flush cut, it's a flush cut with a deep crown, so you have a reverse crown barrel. Um, this is amazing because it just, it really makes the front of the gun look nice, but also what I found is when I'm shooting a gun with a, a deep flush cut crown, the gases tend to go more out to the front instead of curling around the side and keeps the muzzle of your gun a little bit cleaner. Um, as with all cabots, the national standard has a, our reverse dovetail front sight. So one of the problems that uh, a lot of other pistols have is if you have a standard dovetail on the front, your front sight can walk to the left or right and how do you really know if it's gonna be uh, centered or not or zeroed? So what we did is we actually machined the dovetail from the front so the front sight is actually pushed in from the front. It's held in with tension as well as the barrel bushing. So this front sight isn't walking out on you at any time. Another standard feature of the national standard is gonna be our slide top serrations. They start at the front sight and point at it and go all the way back. And this does a couple of things. Number one, it just looks cool. Uh, but number two, it's gonna help cut down on glare on sunny days. Moving back from the front sight, we have our new Cabot Ledge rear sight. So this is pretty cool because it has a, it's a U-notch uh, tactical style sight. So I personally like shooting U-notches. It's a 140 width, so the pairing of the 140 with our front sight is gonna give you a little bit of, uh, of actual light on either side of the front sight post. So it's gonna be very quick to pick up and the tactical ledge is gonna be nice if you need to rack it off a belt, rack it off a table. I don't know how many of our customers are gonna be racking their guns off of belts, tables, and or doors, but hey, it happens. And then the window actually opens up a little bit, which does help to let more light in around the front sight post. Moving down to the side of the slide, this gun has a satin polish finish on the flats. And the great thing about our guns is they're actually perfectly flat. So if you've ever seen guns with French borders, French borders are a nice touch, but they were actually invented to help uh, break up the line where the flat meets the round because the machining technology years past didn't make a perfectly straight line. Well, our, our machines and our process machines everything perfectly flat. So we actually like how the flat and the rounds meet in a perfect straight line. So if you look at the gun, we've got this polished flat section on the slide, and it is a beautiful satin polish finish, and the way it reflects light, it just, I mean, it, it kind of dances off the gun, which is so cool, and then that polish goes on down to the flats of the frame. Moving back on the slide, we have our national standard caulking serrations, which is perfect. These are a really good caulking serration to help you grip, because you know the, the polish is gonna be a little bit slick, so you're gonna have some texture back here to be able to grip when you're racking the slide. And we even go so far as to feather inside, so we have a little, uh, one of our tool tips goes in there, and feathers that caulking serration, which just adds a nice touch and breaks up the, uh, the look of the caulking serrations. Moving around to the back of the gun, you're gonna see just how well our guns are machined to fit together. We have very high tolerances down to, you know, sometimes a thousandth of an inch, and we actually machine our ejector in place. So the frame and slide fit is second to none, but we still hand blend the back of the slide to the frame, because once you put the barrel in and you barrel the gun, there can be a little bit of variance there. So we blend the back of the slide, and then if you go to the top of the grip safety, you can see we do a perfect blend on the top here to where the grip safety is blended perfectly when it's out. When you push the grip safety in, you're gonna see on the bottom here, that's when the grip safety is blended to the frame on the bottom. So what happens is when you're gripping the gun, when you press the grip safety in, you're not gonna feel any ledge from where the frame goes to the grip safety. Also kind of a cool touch, this is something unique, since we make our parts in-house, if you get down to the bottom of our hammer here, so we make our hammers and we make our hammer struts, when you get in and you see 
the top of the hammer strut, we actually put the same serrations on the, on the national standard, on our uh, hammer strut there that are on top of the hammer. So the serrations on the hammer are matched on the hammer strut. Now moving back around to the trigger, there's a couple of differences here to guns past. First off, we still have our iconic TriStar trigger. This takes a lot of work to, to cut these stars out. We actually use a wire EDM, which goes through and perfectly straight, electron by electron, cuts the metal with an electrical discharge. Um, it's a very cool scientific process. It's kind of like watching paint dry, but it's the only way you can get these stars to look like that. So our wire EDM trigger, but what we've done this year that's different than in years past is we've changed the profile of our trigger. So typically, when you are wrapping your finger around the trigger, our old trigger um, was a bullseye style, so it had a nice bull nose, and the idea behind that was for your finger to hook around on that first knuckle and actually hook around the trigger. I actually have one here on a S100. So you can see how your finger would hook around and you could pull the trigger that way, which is great for bullseye shooters. It allows a lot of control. However, there's a lot of people that aren't bullseye shooters, myself included. And uh, what we've done with our trigger face is we've actually flattened it out and made it a little bit deeper and added serrations. So whether or not you're gonna be a bullseye shooter and hook around, you're still gonna have a nice feel. But if you're like me and you're gonna use the pad of your finger, your pad rests perfectly inside that spot and you're not gonna be sliding up and down on the trigger as you're pulling it straight back. So this trigger just feels amazing. I'm normally a flat trigger guy. This new front profile makes me a curved trigger guy again. So moving down below the trigger, we've actually added a soft undercut on the gun. So when you're getting up and getting a high purchase on 1911s, the higher you can get, the better to make sure that your hands are riding up on the frame and helping to mitigate recoil. Well, what we did is we put a very high, this is the highest undercut you can get without making sharp edges. Because another thing that I've noticed and we've noticed at Cabot is if you go too high, the undercut gets small and people with medium or large size hands can't fit in there. So what we did, is we made it as high as we could while still allowing your hands to get in there and not have any sharp edges. So this frame profile just feels awesome. Moving to the front strap, we have our rhombus style checkering. It's a 24 LPI checkering pattern and we have a border on top and on bottom so that the checkering doesn't have, you know, it doesn't run off, it actually has a terminus. This is a really nice uh, look but the feeling on our rhombus cut, it's kind of like a uh, tire tread. So if you look at tire tread and the way it works, your tires aren't necessarily trying to grip until they start to lose traction. You don't want your tires to be gripping the ground all the time because that's gonna cause you to have low gas mileage, all that stuff. Well, this design of checkering is the same way. As you're feeling it, you're not gonna feel grip on it based on the pattern but as soon as the gun tries to move in your hand, your skin, okay, technically that's what's gonna make the, the grip happen, your hand and your skin um, actually goes into those grooves and it tightens up. So it's one of those things where a lot of people in like the 90s when they had really sharp checkering, if the checkering didn't bleed, you know, cause your hands to bleed, they said that's not good enough. Well, we've come and be, we're, we're more civilized now, so we're able to make a, a, a checkering pattern that both feels good and prevents the gun from slipping up out of your hand. So we have the rhombus checkering on the, the front strap and it goes around to the main spring housing. Now, when you're looking at a 1911, you're always gonna look at the grips. Something we're obviously known for at Cabot is our grips. And so what we did is we put a burled walnut on here with our Cabot medallion. It really sets this gun off and makes it look both classic and modern at the same time. Obviously you can switch grips. This is what 1911 guys love to do. So you can do G10, you can do a Fibonacci walnut, you can do a checkered walnut, you can do mammoth, you can do, we do Damascus steel grips. Hell, you want meteorite? We've got meteorite grips. In fact, I think we even have some moon rock and uh, Mars dust back in the safe there. So who knows? There's all kinds of grips, grip options we have at Cabot. And just like every Cabot, the trigger pull is amazing. We set our triggers at three and a half pounds and we actually use weights to measure them. Other shops will use wheeler pull gauges or just kind of guess, 
Um, the problem with pull gauges is depending on how you're pulling and the effort you're putting in, you're gonna get different responses. Weights are the most accurate way to do it. So when you pick up a cabot, it's like every single trigger feels almost identical. So you're gonna just get your finger on that nice pad and wait for the sound. Oh, it's like glass breaking. So being that we make our internals, the way the sear fits into the trigger hooks, fits into all the other internal parts, it just makes this gun feel amazing, whether you're dry firing it or shooting it for real. Now the national standard comes in both a five inch government or four and a quarter full cycle commander. This is the commander version right here. And just talking about our, our commander technology, it's full cycle technology. So when we take a government gun and we make a commander out of it, Normally what other companies are gonna do is they're gonna have to shorten the frame rails and it actually shortens the stroke of the gun. We have full length rails inside under the frame or under the slide here and we have a full stroke. So when the gun cycles, it cycles a full stroke and the way you can tell that is when you look inside here, I'm gonna try to get inside, you can see all of the disconnector. So normally on commanders, you're gonna see half of the disconnector is gonna be covered up, but then as you go, you know, shorter, like, you know, like a three, 3.8 inch barrel I've seen, you're not even be, gonna be able to see the disconnector at all. Well, full length rails, full stroke commander, this gun cycles just like a government would. And that's gonna lend itself to reliability, but also shootability, you're gonna feel the full stroke. So whether you're shooting a commander of ours or a government, they're gonna feel the same. So if you're looking for the perfect 1911 to grace your collection, that is the combination of both style and substance, this is the one that you're gonna wanna have because you can take it out to the range. This is gonna be a perfect barbecue gun, but the national standard will stand out in anyone's collection.